Hey everybody, this is Casey Godin from Premier Martial Arts, and this video is made to help all the parents and students understand what's expected for the basic students test coming up on December 18th and 19th. And if you can't make one of those two days, not a problem. We can find a different day that works for you, maybe before the holidays or after the holidays. So as long as each student gets a chance to come in and actually try out for their test, and then um, if you need private lessons after that, we can set you guys up. We'll make sure every student passes their test. So we broke the, the test down in different pieces. Number one is the safety test. Make sure every student wears a mask when they come to class. They always sanitize their hands and obviously they do their temperature check when they come in. And that's their first three points for their test. The next set of points, we're gonna make sure that each student practices preparation. We understand that preparation is important for the rest of their life. So in martial arts class, you make it a priority. So it's very important that each student has their belt, their gloves, their shin guards, their pants, their t-shirt, and usually on testing, we require them to have their martial arts uh, gi top as well, uniform top as well, but we are not requiring it this time because at Premier Martial Arts, we bought each student a brand new t-shirt, so every single student will graduate in the same exact t-shirt to show we are a team. So we usually do that every holiday season, and we're gonna do it again for you guys, okay? Um, the next part is the responsibility tests. Responsibility is doing the right thing, but make sure you do it by yourself, be in charge of yourself. So the best way that we test our students to make sure they're responsible is they don't have to tie their belt all by themselves. There are seven moves to tying the belt. We don't expect the basic students to remember all of these, but we do want to make sure they understand by the time they test their black belt, they should be able to tie their belt all seven moves correctly and do it in less than 30 seconds. So for today, we'll go with piece by piece, nice and slow, and we'll see how many moves each kid can actually uh, remember by themselves. We get one point for each move they know how to do by themselves. So in class, we say, First move is belt behind your, and the kids will say back, back to the instructor to help them remember the first move. Second move is we say right side long. From that right side long position, next move is called pancakes. Basically, we take our left hand, put it on your stomach, your right hand folds on top, and you stack your belt so it pancakes one on top of the other. Fourth move is you wrap it around, just trying to keep it, uh, to keep the tension on the belt so it doesn't roll down or fold. The next piece is we restack it or stack it again. So the same thing we did before, but now it's three parts of the belt, not two. Next piece is we call it stuff it. Instead of trying to take the end of the belt and trying to you know, fish it through here, we can take our hand from the front, we stuff it underneath, and the belt comes through. The last part is the side of the belt that's upwards, facing the student's face. It goes over and under, and then you tie the belt, and that's it. So that's the responsibility test. The more they can do by themselves, the more points they will score on their test. The next part is the student creed. So we wanna make sure we're mentally training each student and also practicing, um, you know, having some kind of rules or a credo to actually live by. So the student creed, um, I'm gonna do some silly sayings with the kids to actually have fun with it. I'll do it with you guys right now. This will give a chance for your kids to actually rewind this video and watch it over and over again, help them remember the moves, okay? So the student creed works like this, we say, I will develop myself in a positive manner and avoid anything that could reduce my mental growth or my physical health. Student creed number two, I will develop self-discipline in order to bring out the best in myself and others. Student creed number three, um, I will use common sense before self-defense and never be abusive or offensive. Student creed number four, grab their belts when you say, this is a black belt school. We are dedicated, we are motivated. We're on a quest to be our best. Student creed number five, we say winners never quit, quitters never win, I choose to win. Those are all five student creeds. We don't expect them to know all five now, by the time they reach their brown belt level, we do expect that each student has that memorized completely by themselves, okay? Next part of our test, my friends, is the mental training we do every single month that changes. This month, we've been working on integrity. So we do expect each basic student to know the three words or three phrases that go along with our integrity practice. Number one is honesty. Number two is trustworthiness. Number three is doing the right thing even when no one's looking. Those are the three parts we're gonna memorize about integrity. We also have an integrity sheet, a little homework sheet we want the kids to fill out. And most important, on the bottom of the integrity sheet, we would like each parent to sign 
that we are allowed to actually graduate uh, their son or daughter to their next rank. If you don't sign this, that means there's something going on at home that we need to talk to you about and we're not gonna move your son or daughter to the next rank because maybe they're not doing great at home or not doing great at school. So that is the mental training integrity part. Now, next piece is we use the six qualities of a champion. Every month you do a different one. This month happens to be excellence. So when they're physically training, we wanna make sure they know how to get better. So with excellence in mind, we're gonna teach them what's called good, better, best. That's the first point they have to remember. The second one is making sure that you're on your best behavior everywhere. And you're also being a martial arts student everywhere you go, practicing things like respect and focus. So the last one is anytime you try to create a new habit in martial arts or in life in general, if you do the same thing 21 times the same way, it becomes a habit. That's super, super important in martial arts, okay? So with that in mind, let's move right into their kickboxing techniques. So at the basic levels, we don't expect them to look like a professional kickboxer yet, but we wanna make sure we instill the core values or the core pieces of a kickboxer, okay? So I'm gonna use the target behind me, give you the basics. So when they get into a kickboxing stance, we expect their stronger, more dominant leg to be in the back. We expect their heel to be up on their back foot. We expect their fists to be closed, their fingers here and their thumbs on top of their fingers, the knot inside. The hands cover their temples on the side of their head and their elbows are in protecting their body. And this is their proper stance. So if they can do all four of those things, score one point for each one of those. Also from their stance, we expect them to know their left hand and right hand. We do expect them to know their lead foot and their rear foot, so their lead side of the body and the rear side of their body. And after that, we do expect them to know some basic strikes with the terminology of how we actually use, uh, uh, how we throw strikes. So I'll run through a couple of basics with you so you can see what you expect the students to do. So if we say jab, we expect them to know the jab is the lead hand, the cross is the rear hand. If we say lead hook, rear hook, lead uppercut, rear uppercut, we do expect them to start to know those. We don't expect them to look perfect just yet. We do need them to basically understand that terminology. The next four pieces we're gonna work on is make sure they understand the front kicks, lead side, rear side. So lead front kick and rear front kick. Also some basics on how to throw their lead roundhouse kick and their rear roundhouse kick. We have actually added in some other bonus kicks during class, like side kicks and hook kicks. So the student's gonna know more than we're gonna test on, but those things are extra points right now. But the basic core fundamentals of kickboxing are super, super important, okay? So the next part is our self-defense test. I'm gonna move the camera for you so you can see a little better on this one. Because not all self-defense is defending against the bully or defending against someone mentally or physically trying to hurt you. Sometimes it's just an accident. If you fall, hit the ground, we wanna make sure we teach our students how to protect themselves. So in class, we're playing a game called Timber. Basically, if a tree falls in a woods, uh, if a lumberjack cuts down a tree, they say timber when it falls. So we make it a game for the kids, but it really is protecting their head from hitting the cement. So long story short, if we have our students sitting on the rear ends, from here, we have them take both of their hands and cover the back of their skull, fold their hands across their head like this. So when they fall backwards, when they hit the ground, their hands will hit and not their skull. We try to avoid hitting their skull or their hands at all, but if they do roll back to hit their hands and they won't hurt their head as much. So if they fall sideways, same thing. We grab the back of our head, back of our skull, hand goes across as they fall to the side, they will land on their arm instead of hitting the ground. We do that on both sides of the body and we have the students practice falling forwards too. So from here in this position, when they fall, we expect them to hit their forearms, keeping their head away from the ground. So as long as you do all four of those moves and their head's not hitting the cement or the mats during class, we'll actually score for four points on that one. So the next part is called an egg roll. So super simple, just the basic roll we teach to our students before we start doing more advanced rolling. We just wanna make sure they know how to keep their head off the ground. So we have them kneel down, with their elbows near their knees, and they roll sideways, they protect their head, and that's it. We expect them to do that move. Now we've added a few more things in there too. The higher level stuff is our requirement. We've done it for, for certain classes, certain age groups, because we want them to have the advanced material or see what the advanced material is gonna be like, okay? Little things ahead of to get up. So from here, if they fall down, hit the ground, I'm gonna ask them to do a sit up. So when they sit up in this position, they have a base behind them, so they're not on the ground anymore. They have one hand up to defend themselves. They have a foot on the ground that will help them stand to get them off the ground faster. And they have their leg coiled back like this. So 
they can actually strike if they need to. If this is a person that pushed them down and hit the ground, instead of having no weapons, they have defense here, just like it's coiled up, just in case they need it. We even ask them for a stand up sometimes. So from this position, we ask them to stand and they're right back in their self-defense position if they need it. Like I said, not all of that was required.